just got back from Greenland, and uh, you've spoken about that as as really just a you know very much of a changing experience for you. What are some of the things that you saw and experienced there that um, you know have concern you as much as they did? Well, we've heard the word climate change get used in, in different fora. Uh, my view of climate change is, you know, what is the impact on the sea, um, on, on species of fish, on, on port infrastructure, and in rising sea level. Um, so looking at that in totality without looking at why is it happening, but what is happening. And if you really want to go to ground zero of climate change, uh, Greenland is a great place to begin, uh, w which has an ice field uh, several miles thick, uh, a number of glaciers that are now migrating into the ocean. Uh, we went to the largest glacier in Greenland called uh, Jakobshavn Glacier, which has now retreated over 20 miles within the, within the last decade. Um, and it spawned more icebergs. Uh, in fact, we're counting more icebergs in the North Atlantic than we have in, in decades. The iceberg that sunk Titanic was spawned in all likelihood from this very same glacier. But the important piece. And a job that you've done since 1912 to since patrol that area. And continue to do so. Um, that one glacier, should it melt, would by itself raise sea level by a foot and a half. Now, what date will that happen? I, I don't think we can say with, with any certainty. Um, but working with a number of climatologists, we took w two world renowned climatologists with us to Greenland. Um, and as we look at the various studies and you get the lowest common denominator, uh, at least two meters of sea level rise can be anticipated between now and the end of this, this century. So if you throw six plus feet of water on top of sea level today, what's that, what does that do to low-lying areas? What does it do to lower Louisiana, to places like Miami, and Hampton Roads, enlargement? Uh, not too far from our naval base there, where on a king tide or an extremely high tide, you've got standing salt water in some of these communities. Add six more feet to that, and what happens? So we're looking at that of how do we plan, what's the impact to our commercial infrastructure, military infrastructure, what happens when you've got 80% of the world lives within 100 kilometers of the ocean? Well, maybe they live a little bit closer now because the ocean has moved closer in yet. Now throw a super typhoon on top of that, or a category five hurricane, then what is the impact of that as well? Because we have to respond to those contingencies. So my view is we can't use yesterday's models to forecast what level do we have to respond to in a natural disaster looking deeper into the 21st century with rising sea level.